Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create a simple document scanner using OpenCV. We will learn how to run this in real time and how we can save these images by just pressing a button on the keyboard. This is a perfect project for beginners as it is simple and it covers the core principles of OpenCV. I upload videos on a weekly basis so don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep updated with the latest videos. So let's get started. Before we begin, let's have a look at the pipeline of the project. So first we are going to get our image from the webcam. Then we will convert it into grayscale and apply an edge detector to find the edges. Next we will find all the contours present in the image. From this we will filter and get the biggest contour. With the corner points of the biggest contour, we will use word perspective to get the desired image. Later we will apply the adaptive thresholding to get the scanned paper feel. Lastly we will add the functionality of saving the image to a folder. So let's have a look at the code. So we have two scripts here. The first one is our document scanner main and the other one is the utilities. Now in the utilities we have all the supporting functions and the main code is in the document scanner. So first we are importing all our libraries which is cv2, numpy and utilities. If you are not familiar with how to import you can go to file settings you can go to project interpreter and you can add any library you want here so for example open cv and you can click on that and you can click install package so we have cv2 numpy and utilities we are importing from our main directory which is here now the first thing we will do is we will initialize our uh, parameters so we are creating a camera object and uh, then we also have a flag that will allow us to run a webcam or an image so I have my webcam set up so I will be using the webcam but you can use the image I have added an image for reference uh, by the name one so uh, this is the image that you can use so let's go back and so then we are setting uh, the brightness of the camera I'm increasing it a little bit then we have the width and the height of our image. Now in the while loop we are first creating a blank image because we will be using that a lot um, and then we are taking our main image from the webcam we are resizing it and then we start the pipeline of the project so we first convert it into grayscale using uh, the cvt color function then we convert then we add a little bit of blur using the gaussian blur function and then we are moving on to the canny edge detector so let's have a look at how that looks like so let's look at the gray and blur images so let's go down here uh, I will explain all of this code uh, as we go along but let's see the gray image first and then we have the image blur image blur so let's run that and there we have our original image uh, this is our gray image and this is the blurred image uh, forget about the label here but it is the blur image so let's move on so once we finish the blur we are going to get our edges using the canny edge detector and we have two threshold values for our canny edge detector so both of them we are getting from track bars so we have discussed this in our previous videos how to use track bars uh, if you are not familiar you can uh, go and check out the link below for uh, the information on track bars but we just have a function called uh, value track bars and we also have a function called initialize track bar and both of them are in the utilities so let's go to the utilities and there you go so this is the initialization of the track bars and this is where we get the values of the track bar and we send them back 
so once we go, uh, get those values we can play around with them in real time so that we get the best results so let's put that and see how that works so instead of the blur i will put the canny which is the image threshold where is it image threshold okay so nope that's not the one let's go back so the image threshold and we don't want to apply anything else right now we want to see just the canny edge detector so let's run that again and there you go so this is our uh, threshold image so as we can see we are getting the contours properly but if we are not we can uh, we can change these trackbar values and you can see it has an effect on it so based on uh, your situation you can change the values so uh, next we are going to apply some dilation and some erosion now this is not necessary but um, it helps as uh, if there are any gaps or something uh, with some noise it can remove it can help remove that so let's see how that looks so I have removed that and it should give us yeah so as you can see now the the edges or the line itself the contours are quite thick so that we can easily detect our main contour point now let's go back to our code and till here we have done the pre-processing of the image now we are going to apply the contours uh, method so in order to get the contours we are going to use the find contours function and using that uh, we are going to save all the contours that we have found in in the contours uh, variable and here we will draw all of them so let's see how that looks like so image contours is it image contours uh, yes yes it is image contours so if we run that so here you can see that we are getting our contours and uh, we have a few up here as well a little bit of noise here and there but it's not so bad now one thing to note is that we are using uh, the external method this gives the best results if you are trying to find the outer edges okay so next we are going to find the biggest contour and we will uh, define that as our paper so to get the biggest contour we have a function in the utilities by the name biggest contour so we will send all the contours uh, to our function and then we will find uh, the biggest one now before we find the biggest one we also have to make sure it is a rectangle so using uh, all our contours we are going to first filter it through an area so that we don't get too much noise and then we are going to check if it is a rectangle so if it has four edges then we will move on further now once we move on further we are going to find the biggest uh, area and we will loop whenever we found the biggest one we will replace it with the previous one so this is how you will find the biggest contour uh, if you want to learn more about contours there is a separate video i have done in detail the link will be in the description so let's go back and once we have the biggest contour uh, let's let's print out what it looks like so let me print this out print biggest so once we have that yeah so as you can see here let me stop that uh, as you can see here we are getting four points one two three and four so these are the four points of our uh, biggest contour so we are just checking that whether if we have found a contour the biggest contour and then we are going to apply our warp perspective now because warp perspective is quite sensitive in terms of uh, points so we are going to rearrange our uh, points so that they match with our annotation now what does that mean that means 
uh, let me run this first so we have uh, image pick contour and then we are putting it here so yeah so let's display image pick contour pick contour so let's run that so there you go so now we have four points and these are the corner points that are printing out here so what we need to define is that which point is your starting point which is zero zero now if this point is zero zero uh, we need to define it to our uh, what do you call program now what can happen is that we can label this as one two three and four but in the detection it could be detected as maybe this as one two three and four so what we have to do is we have to make sure that our annotation aligns with the image that we have detected to do that we have the function we have created a function uh, by the name reorder so if we go to that function this is in the utilities so what it will do is it will uh, sort out all our points um, based on our annotation now what is our annotation uh, it is zero zero this is our first point then the width and zero is our second point and then zero and height is our third point and uh, the width and the height are our last points so this is how it should be arranged before we can apply the word perspective so this is what the reorder is doing so once the reorder is done we are simply uh, displaying our points uh, we are drawing them and then using these two points we are up, uh, creating our transformation matrix and then we are applying our word perspective to get our uh, colored image so image warp image warp img warp colored there you go so let's run that and see what happens so there you go so we are taking these points and basically we are creating it as a rectangle so moving on uh, now if you want to learn in detail about word perspective as well I have another video in the description uh, in which I have discussed in detail how it works now moving on we are going to remove 20 pixels from each side uh, this is to avoid having any um, what do you call a bend in the, the paper if I remove that let's see what happens so you will see that here at the corner here at the corner you can see we have some uh, brown line as well we have some area of the background as well so we don't want to do that so we are just removing 20 pixels from each side once we have that uh, we are applying adaptive threshold uh, to get um, to get a more paper like feel so if you want to convert it into just black and white uh, color then uh, this is the way to go so first we will convert it into grayscale and then we will apply adaptive threshold method to get our image uh, to get our binary image and once we have the binary image we will reverse it uh, we will make all uh, zeros one and all ones zeros to get our image now sometimes when you do that uh, it gives you noise as well uh, when you use ad uh, adaptive threshold so we are using a median blur function to remove that uh, salt and pepper noise so let's have a look at how that looks and image um, warp gray and then image adaptive threshold we can just copy it from here so there you go so this is your word perspective then you are converting it into grayscale and then you are basically applying adaptive threshold to uh, get this binary image at the end so moving on so uh, at the end you can see here we have an array of images so this array of image uh, is just an input 
for our stacking function. So um, in one of the previous videos, I've explained how you can join these images together and I've created a custom um, function to stack these images together so you don't have to deal with a lot of code. And I have updated uh, the stacking function as well. Now it has the option to add labels. So the labels you see at the top uh, so you can write anything here so you can explain what this image is so all you have to do is you have to create so like you created an image uh, matrix uh, or an image array the same way you are going to create your uh, label and uh, for each image you have to write the corresponding label of it and then you can pass it along to the stacking image function so as you know the stacking image function uh, takes in the image array and it takes in the scale value and now it can also take in the labels if you don't want you can just remove it and it should still work uh, fine and if we add it it should give us all our labels So finally, once we are done, um, by the way, this else is so that if nothing is, um, if we don't find any contours, we are not getting any page. So in that case, we will not uh, find, uh, we will not display any contours or we will not apply the word perspective. So all of this is, uh, all of this will happen only if we have a contour present in our biggest, um, uh, what do you call, variable so then at the end we are just uh using the i am show function to display the output and the last thing we are doing is saving uh using the s key so here it will check for the s input from the keyboard and once we get that we are saving the colored image the color uh, word perspective as um uh, JPEG file uh, and it is storing it in the scanned folder. So here you have the scanned folder It is saving it in here and if you are running it once and you want to scan multiple documents So it will keep account of those and it will keep adding and saving your files So we are also displaying the scanned uh, the scan saved text once you press the S button so that you get some feedback that it has been saved So let's see how that looks like so let's run that now here we are so you have to be present on the the actual window to press the s button so if i press s it will say scan saved and if i go back to my scanned folder i will see i have uh, some images i think this is from a previous run as well i will delete those and run that again um let's go here and scan so it is scanned and then you have your image so you can see this is your image now it's not very clear and the reason for that is that i'm using a very uh, low resolution which is 640 by uh, 480 if you increase it you can get a um, much better uh, resolution so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new and uh, there there's will be a lot more projects coming up and there will be a complete new uh, tutorial uh, series for OpenCV uh, and I will be using animations and a lot of different strategies to explain uh, the ideas, the theories and the practical parts of OpenCV. So stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe and hit that notification bell and I will see you in the next video.